days that just screams. It is time to celebrate and a wreath is that thing, whether it's indoors or outdoors. So you're going to show us how to uh, DIY one and this one's going to be for outside? Yeah, outside? absolutely. Although where you're going with that, the scream of the holidays, yeah. it's like red wine, Leanne had a cover today. Uh, yeah, so we're going <laughs> to talk about boughs, but we're going to talk about how to use them in your space. Okay. We talked about how to look after them. Now let's talk about how to actually make beautiful pieces like this. Lovely. Right? It's, That's there's, so nice. There's actually a trick to it. Okay. Now people just think that they could take long branches like this and bend them around, mm -hmm. and you can do that, but it won't look like this. Oh. So the way the florists actually do it, and the way I do it, is you take a branch like this from your garden, from your tree even, okay. and you actually are just pruning off the little pieces like that, okay? Yeah. So you want the short pieces like this. And you're gonna work in groups of three, okay? Okay. So three, like that, you're gonna tie them together, you get a little string here cut, you're gonna just tie them up like this, and you're gonna leave a little bit of extra string on the end so that you can attach them to the bow, okay? Or okay. attach them to the wreath, wreath itself. We'll do that. So you're gonna do groupings of this. Then you're gonna try and mix it up with some other varieties, but maybe you're some also gonna boxwood. But cut off into small pieces Always again? Always in groups of three, oh. okay? Then you take this group of three, yes. and I actually think I have a wreath right here, like that. Perfect. You're gonna take it, and you're gonna tie it right onto there. And as you continue to work around in small groupings, you're gonna fill the whole wreath. Oh. Now this actual wreath frame just came from a craft store. Mm -hmm. Not very expensive, I think it was $3.99. Yeah. But you can fill it with boughs and just keep going. Just keep going with the small ones around. The reason you don't want the big ones like this to tie, and tie it like that yeah. is because you end up with the large stubs sticking out at the end. Right. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to start working in embellishments. Okay. Call it bling a little bit. Not all right. A little bit of bling. So I love adding things like just artificial berries. Yes. I tried real berries one year. Yes. The birds and the squirrels ate all of them. <laughs> Literally, I had, had berries hanging off my wreath. Looked, they will nibble on these as well. So okay. have your red markers ready to just touch them up. But you can work these into the the actual wreath itself, or, and I love using pine cones. Now, a trick with pine cones. Yes. Bring them inside before you put them on because they'll open up. Oh, okay. the way, And when a pine cone opens up, you can actually fit the string inside a lot easier right. than if it's all nice and tight, okay? okay. And then you're going to mount the pine cones, the little berries, right on the bottom of your wreath, and off you go, decorating. That is so beautiful. I love that. And it, it makes sense that it's a little bit more time-consuming, but it looks a lot better if you do the threes. Exactly. Do the and threes. a couple of things that you don't want to do, all right? Yeah. Really quick. You don't want to use elastic bands. Okay. Uh, the sap on trees, because when you bring them in, they are going to drip a little bit of sap and they're going to leak. It actually is acidic to elastic bands and these break. Yeah. And then you have branches patting in all over mm. the place, and that's not a good thing. Mm -mm. The other thing that I want to point out is if you're going to do a garland, the exact same technique applies. You're going to take your groups of three, mm -hmm. and you're just going to tie them to the garland to a rope like that. You're going to continue to tie them in groups of three along the garland itself until you're done the length that you want. You customize it. It is so simple, but again, these will leak sap, so yes. if you're going to put them on your mantle or hanging anywhere, make sure you put a little covering underneath yes. just to protect it. I used to use parchment paper. Oh, you did? Yeah. That's smart. Easy breezy. Yeah, that is easy. So since we're talking about um, exterior decor like wreaths, I thought we would get a sense of how all of your uh, exteriors look. So Brian, we're going to start with yours. Walk us on through house. the gorgeousness at your house. We always have garlands on the portico and down the columns. And I have hooks on ours, so we put small hooks up, yes. and those stay up all year round. Oh, nice! So that That's they're smart. not we're not nailing in and affecting the paint, and then just yes. wrap it around the columns, and then just tie it at the bottom, and then the wreaths on the door. I, I have to have that. It's beautiful. And you then know we have who should do that? You should have the. We should do those hooks for the light, so that people actually take them back down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you lazy people today. <laughs> the Christmas lights now. That's why I don't put them up, because I would be that neighbor that you hate. They're staying right. up all year. Well, they think if care. they're off, no one will notice. Right, right. right. Yeah, exactly. No one's going to see it. Okay, LA, we have um, this gorgeous vignette from outside uh, your front door as well. Gorgeous. Well, it's all about the Santa sign. Of course. <laughs> That's the stage that we're at in life with right. the boys. So yes. that pretty much kind of denotes Christmas at our house. And then the planters, we usually do bright, crazy colors. This year we just went really, really neutral, but I had leopard print ornament balls in my Oh, well, excuse in my me. <sighs> <laughs> That's her signature, you know. <laughs> okay, so Carson, uh, I love this exterior shot of your home. Oh, thank you. It is beautiful. You do, I do, do, do you take the, the lights, lights down? And I take them down what? every year. Absolutely. Gold stuff. I was, Gold stuff. And I wait for the nice warm weather and I'm up on the ladder and it was middle of November this year. I was yes. up on the ladder putting up the lights and it takes about four hours to do, but Whew. I got Christmas Sarah Carols going through my head while I'm doing it, so sure. Wow, good for you. I think, wow. I think most should hire professionals to do the lights. <laughs> I'll hire yes. Carson. Carson 
could probably handle yeah. it, but most of us, yes. no. Maybe someone else. Snow okay, ladder. and this is your front door as well, um, which is gorgeous, and it's a beautiful snowy day. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. I, I always bring in red because there's something about the light levels at this time of year yes. that that color of red is so vibrant. Yeah. It just appeals to me. It's like it's saturated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very so nice. This time of year, red for me. But really quickly, I want to go out to some of the viewers now that sent in their pictures. Uh, this is Eileen. So she creates this vignette by her front door. She says she loves decorating for Christmas. And then Lisa made this planter for her front porch. She says it looks really good at night. And Amanda says she's keeping it simple with a mannequin tree in the front bay window. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. It's really nice when you have that front window and you've got something gorgeous in there yes. so that you know when people are walking by, they see that beauty when you're, it's lit from the inside and they can see in. It looks cozy. Nice. It looks cozy. cozy. I love that. All right, let's go to break. We got more coming up. Stay with us.